What's going on everybody and welcome to part three of our web scraping with beautiful soup mini series in this tutorial What we're going to be talking about is scraping tables and if we have time XML documents So let's jump in. I'm going to go ahead and delete from here and uh, Looking at this here. So this is our table that we're going to try to parse so looking at the source just in case anybody's not too familiar with HTML tabling uh, basically, it's going to start with a table tag, and then everything in between table tags has like TR tags for table rows. And then within the row, here we have a TH for table header, so this is the header of the table. But then the rest of this is just TD tags for table data. Okay, so we're going to try to pull just the table data information from here. So the way that we're going to do that is first by defining table. So table equals and in this case, you could do, you can do this like a couple of ways. So remember before, like for the nav bar, we said soup, soup.nav, right? You could do the same thing, soup.table, right? So we can print table, save and run that. And we get the table information. We can also say table equals soup.find uh, table. So we're just going to overwrite it there, okay? It's the same thing. So you can use those two those two ways, and at least so far, we're not seeing any difference. So I'll close this, and I'm gonna just comment out that first one. If I remember to, I'll run it with both just so you can see at the end. But anyways, soup.find table. Uh, so now what we want to do is we're gonna say table underscore rows equals table dot find all because we're gonna look for all the table rows, right? We could do we could do table dot tr or table dot find tr, but it's just gonna find one of them. We want all of them. Then we're gonna say for tr in table rows. What do we want to do? Well, we want to find the table data now. So we're going to find table data between the tr tags. So td would equal tr.find all table data tags. Now the row, we're just going to make a quick one liner for loop here. So it'll just be i.text for i in table data. And we need to say row equals that. Then when we're all done, let's print the row. And let's run that. Great. So we get all the table data here. You'll notice this one's empty. That's because that's the table header. And that doesn't have TD tags. It's the table header. But it was between table row tags. Now, before we progress any further, I will just show you uh, Panda's version of grabbing tables. I think it's a lot better. So I think if we're talking about scraping tables, I definitely need to show this. This is what I'll usually use. So if you don't have pandas, you can pip install pandas, but it will take a long time to install. So if you don't have it and maybe it's not interesting yet to you or whatever, you don't have to grab it. Um, pandas is a data analysis library. And if you are interested in pandas tutorials, I have a bunch of them. So what I'm gonna do real quick is up at the top, I'm gonna import pandas as PD. And then I'm gonna comment all this out and then I'm just going to say the following. I'm going to say DFs for data frames equals pd.readhtml. And then we just pass the link in there. And what this is going to do is it's going to go to this website and whatever you put in, and it's going to try to, it's going to parse all of the tables it can find and return a list of data frames because there might be multiple tables. Now what we're going to do is for data frame in data frames, let's just print df.head. Actually, it should be short enough. Let's just print the entire data frame. Cool. So we get um, the whole thing. Now, uh, we could say when we go to do the read HTML, we can say header equals zero, and that'll make the first kind of row the header. Yes. Okay. So that's how you can use it with pandas and read tables and pandas. I think that's so much more simple. Uh, you can, of course, convert this to a list of lists, like df.values.toList, okay? You could do that if you wanted, but it's much more easy to start manipulating running calculations or whatever on a data frame than it is just a bunch of lists. Anyway, thought I'd show that. Finally, let's get on to the XML documents. If you're not uh, familiar with what an XML uh, document is, usually you're going to see these in the form of sitemaps. I put a link to it at the bottom here. Sitemaps are basically 
maps of all the URLs on your website. Okay, so there will be some information here, but as you'll notice, there, it's just between tags. So XML was meant to be slightly more human readable. Okay, so it's like human and machine readable. So here you can see basically all the links for pythonprogramming.net. Now, a lot of times people use sitemaps on like news websites and stuff because this is where the newest links you can find them. So on like, let's say you go to Washington Post or something like that and you go to the Washington Post sitemap, uh, that's gonna have all of the links for uh, Washington Post. So let's go to Washington Post, see what we find. It's probably at the bottom. I'm just gonna get, wow, there's no, no, okay. Okay, it's probably RSS. Yes, I agree. Dang it. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be quicker. Why? They like hiding it now. It's Washington Post sitemap. It's probably like really obvious and I'm just missing it. Okay, so here's one sitemap at least. This is just their main sitemap, but usually news websites, I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time looking for it, but usually news websites will have sitemaps even for specific topics like politics, news, or whatever. So if you wanted to have some sort of bot that was constantly tracking news, you would just track those sitemaps. So closing that out, let's talk about reading the sitemap now. So um, doing this is, there's like one slight difference in the soup, but I'm gonna copy this. And in fact, let's just do it up here. I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna uncomment this out. And rather than parse me mcparse face, it's going to be sitemap.xml. And then rather than using um, LXML there, when we create the soup, we're gonna say XML. Then what we're gonna do is just so we are confident here, let's print soup. Cool. So we got everything we need and we know that, okay, it's between URL tags and you might want last modified. Um, so a lot of times they'll have dates or whatever. So to figure out, have I visited this link already? You could use the date like on a news website. But may basically what we're interested in is, is the, the location tag. <clears throat> so print soup, cool. So here, all we would need to do is for URL in soup dot find all location print URL, URL dot text. Okay, and these are just all the Python programming.net URLs. So that is all for beautiful soup. Also, I just realized I never did this second version of table. So let's just run that really quickly. So using just dot table or whatever, you get the same thing. Okay, just wanted to show that. I've always been able to use those interchangeably. Uh, I wish I could tell you what the difference was. I'm sure there is one because there's, it wouldn't be there, I don't think, if there was no difference. But anyway, if someone knows the difference, feel free to comment below. Okay, so that concludes the third beautiful soup web scraping tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.